Hello and welcome to the Unitrends Solution Video Series. In this video, we'll be taking you through an interface tour of the Unitrends Backup Software and Recovery Series Appliance Solutions. Let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, so you now have access to the interface of the Backup Software or the Recovery Series Appliance. And you want to better orient yourself with the layout of the interface. Let's walk through how everything is organized. Now what you may have already realized if you've accessed the interface already, initially a product tour will pop up walking you through the interface already. Now this is purely optional, but if you go to the top right and you'll see an option for product tour, this will actually walk you through the interface visually as you step-by-step uh, -step, uh, walk through this little tour wizard. Now we're going to close this out and actually walk through this for you here now and obviously explain what the different options are and where everything is laid out. Now the order in which we'll do this is simply walk through the main panes along the left here as I walk you through the interface. So we'll start with the dashboard, which is the first place it takes you to when you log into it. And what you have here is your bird's eye view of the health or status of your Unitrends deployment, allowing you to quickly identify things that may require your attention or if you're looking to extract information around your Unitrends deployment. Now, as you see here, there's several different sections here in the interface. All of these are referenced as tiles, and each tile is uh, specific to providing some type of information around Unitrends. Mm -hmm. Now, as you see here, for some of these, they actually have links elsewhere. So, for example, in the backup summary, we can identify servers or systems that aren't being backed up. So, if I was to click on any one of these, it actually would jump me straight to the reports down here and actually output a list of these metrics. Uh, I'm going to go to reports later on, so I'm not going to jump to that just yet. But just know some of these do offer you links directly to the areas that they're identifying. Now, if you look in the, the top right in the gear icon, and you click on that, there are other tiles you can add here to the dashboard, as you can see here. All right, so I could add, for example, our community feed, social media feeds, save that, if I scroll down, I will now see those. All right. I also can sort these tiles for customization, as you see here. All right. So if you want to organize the layout of the dashboard uh, specific to how you want to see things, that is certainly possible here in the dashboard section. And of course, if you don't like the way things are organized, just hit reset, and that'll go back to the default view of the dashboard. Again, look at the top right here. You have several different options. One of those is if you want to reset the web login account. You can do that here, of course, log out. Next, we have options for inventory sync of the environment. We can check for updates of agents, as well as software updates for the recovery series appliance or the backup software. And again, you can actually link back to the old interface. So if you're an existing customer, and you've upgraded to the new interface, uh, but want to flip back to the old, uh, you most certainly can do that here uh, from the Open Legacy Interface option. Then we have one of the question mark, which you can assume is around uh, helping you understand more about Unitrends deployment. I already mentioned uh, the product tour, which pops up initially. You can go back to that and launch it. Uh, other areas, for example, allow you to identify or link to our community forums, online documentation, system info about your Unitrends deployment, things of that nature. And then lastly, we do have an alert section and that'll pop up here. So alerts, things like you might be running out of backup space or you might have a new update available, things like that will pop up here in the alert section, which you can of course dismiss or delete those. All right, so again, the dashboard is your bird's eye view of your Unitrends deployment. So the next section we have here is protect. In the Protect view, it allows you to identify a couple different areas of information. So if you look here towards the center portion, we have our recovery series instances in our lab, N824S and 936. Our configuration is set up in a manner where our 824 is performing local backups, and we're then copying those backups to our 936. If you have the software, you would still see the same instances in this manner. Right? But as you drill into a particular instance, you can see the inventories of servers and systems that it's responsible for. And then depend upon the container that you click, so if I click on the actual appliance, 
it'll then populate to the right here everything it's responsible for and then to the right also provide you with the status view around backups and backup copies so one you can see the history going back to the previous seven days around certain systems you also can quickly identify if there might be systems out there that aren't being protected that indicate no status at all as you can see so again, this provides you with a view of what each appliance, instance, software, or physical is responsible for and protection status here. If you also take note to the top left, you can from here kick off our two jobs, backup and backup copy. I'll go into more detail uh, those sections in the, the jobs portion, but just know that you can launch those here from the protect view. Next up, we have recover. Now, in the recovery view, you have access to all of our unit trends backups, as you can see here. In our particular environment, we have, as you can see, virtual machine backups, database, agent based backups, right? So, whatever you've done with unit trends from a backup standpoint will be listed and accessible from the catalog here. And as you expand a particular backup, you will see all the point in times available to you based upon the achievement set retention. And as you pick a particular point in time, you then have all of your resource options across the top. Now for the purposes of this video, I'm not going to get into the details of the steps and functions to performing restores. We do have other videos in this series that talk that specifically, so please do reference those. Also take note to the right, filtering options. So in the catalog, if there's certain backups you only want to view, you can, using the filter options here, identify and view just those. Okay. Now, coming back to the top here, you have the catalog to view all of your backups. You have the file recovery tab, which allows you to manage all of those sessions. In each session, you can view the details of that. So, for example, we have a virtual machine backup for file recovery, and this provides the details to access that backup and perform the file recovery. And then third and lastly, we have instant recovery. So instant recovery, there's three types. There's VMware instant recovery, Hyper-V instant recovery, and Windows instant recovery. Any of those three sessions are maintained from this tab. So if you want to manage the session, the state, end it, right, that can all be controlled from here. So again, anything from a restore standpoint is managed from, of course, the recovery section. We then will then move to your jobs view. And also in the jobs view, you have a couple different tabs here. Currently looking at the job manager tab, which lists everything you've scheduled and set to run. So if you pick a particular job, you can with that view the details, edit, disable, delete, or run it now. Now any tab that you're in, you always have the option to create a backup or a backup copy. For an actual step-by-step -step walkthrough of those two jobs, please do reference the other videos in the series that walk you through that specifically. In the other tabs, you have your active jobs. So anything currently running can be viewed here, as you can see. And within a particular job that's running, you can view the details, pause, and or cancel it. And to the right, you have your job history. So this is all of your backup jobs history if you want to access that. And then all of your background system jobs for the recovery series appliance or backup software. Then below that we have reports. And while in the reports view, you have your categories, and then with each category, you have your different reports you can actually run. Now, depending upon the report, some may offer the ability to specify a date range to fine tune exactly what it's going to uh, display and cover for you from a historical standpoint. Uh, some reports might simply be run immediately. Now, for this particular report, it does offer the ability to filter it. So before I can export that to a PDF or a CSV file, if there are results in the report that you don't care about, you can filter them. So before you can export it out, you can provide just the information you're looking for. And again, you can export any report to a PDF or a CSV. Right, but just some of them offer the date ranges, some of them, again, you, you run immediately. And then last but not least, we have the configure section. So as you may have already guessed, 
the configure section is where you can control and manage some of the more advanced backend operations to your Unitrans deployment. And within the appliances tab, it'll list all instances of the software or recovery series appliances that you have deployed. So if you do have multiple instances as we have done, you can add them here for centralized management. As I mentioned before, the 824S is backing up locally all of our servers and systems, and then we're copying those to a 936S. So within each instance, software or recovery series appliance, you can within that manage the storage, backup copy targets, and its network parameters. Now if you also take a look at the top, for example, edit, allows you to set some of the more advanced options here. If you come over to protected assets, this is where it lists the inventory of every server or system you've added to each appliance instance or software, also giving you the option to add those. So for example, if there's a new server in just the environment and you want to deploy an agent to it, you can do that from here. And then your last tab is for copied assets, where you would view any backups you've copied to another Unitrends instance, the backup software recovery series, or the Unitrends cloud, you can view those backups there. And that concludes our video for the interface tour of the Unitrends backup software and recovery series appliance solution. I do encourage you to check out the remainder of the video series for more helpful information, but thank you for taking the time to learn more about Unitrends.